and welcome everybody to today's webinar on how to streamline editorial post-production in e-commerce. I'm Julia De Carlo, Events and Field Marketing Manager at Pixels, and I will be your host for today. So here with me is Ronald Ibarra, Head of Editorial and Video at Pixels. Hi, Ron. Hello. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? Good. I know you are in Illinois, so it's pretty late for you. So thank you for joining us, everyone. Yeah, no worries. Thank you for having me. We are very excited. It's your first time for a live session. So we are very excited and happy to have you here. Everyone, please, um, if you can write on the chat on the right uh, where you're joining us from, we are very uh, excited to know that. And um, also, you will have on the right a Q&A section where you can drop throughout our whole conversation, all the questions, and at the end of a session, we are going to go over them, and hopefully we'll have time to answer quite a few of them. So, Ron, uh, while everyone is joining, can you please share in a few words what's your experience and what is your current role at Pixels? Sure. Hey, everyone. I'm Ron. Um, I've spent the last decade or so working in post-production, uh, mostly editorial and sports campaigns as well as some e-commerce later on. Uh, my background is actually in architecture and design, but I've always lo like loved uh, coding and tinkering and things like that. So uh, I actually started out as a freelancer retouching beauty shots. And then uh, when I went full time, I managed a post-production in-house team in London. And uh, right now, as you mentioned, I'm heading the editorial and video at Pixels in Vietnam, where I kind of get to blend like all of it, you know, retouching technology and it's awesome. Very cool. Is it already a year that you've been in Hanoi? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. It's been about Almost. a year and two months. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> feels nice. longer, but yeah. Nice. Great. So I have actually a question for the audience um, to start off uh, today's conversation. Do you shoot e-commerce, editorial or both? And you have a section on the right where it says poll that you can drop your answers. And in a few seconds, we'll see what the results are. Also, if this is not your role, you can say whatever you like more, if it's shooting e-commerce, editorial, or even both. So while we get some answers, um, I wanted to go over what's the agenda for today. So first, we're going to look at some examples of websites, category pages, and BDPs to see how uh, brands are using editorial images. And then we're gonna discuss some challenges um, that team can encounter when managing editorial content creation. And we're gonna look last at the end, um, the Pixels tools that can help streamlining the editorial post-production. So mostly everyone uh, has voted for both uh, e-commerce and editorial. So it's pretty hard to, to decide. All right. so. I think we get, get started and by kind of giving a little more context on the topic we are going to talk about today. And we discussed in our prep call, Ron, um, that in your opinion, there's no right or wrong or global definition of what um, editorial imagery is and what are the differences with uh, an elevated shot or um, a standard e-com shot. But if we'd have to say, what are the main characteristics that fall under a definition of editorial and what are the difference with the other ones that we just mentioned? What would you say? I, I think that historically editorial images were mostly like for publications, but I feel like in the current market, aside from like quality and budget, like it really tells a story. It's not just trying to sell your product, but it's really trying to sell you a lifestyle. And it just kind of, it's one of the ways that like brands try to create like create a clear definition of who they are or how to connect with their audience or sort of like separate themselves from the competitors and some brands will have like really serious product pages but they have really playful editorial imagery and i think that's been my experience for the last few years just to see that transition from e-commerce into elevated and editorial Right, and also what we can say nowadays, uh, brands are struggling a bit 
to differentiate while consumers are just scrolling uh, infinite product listings that might seem all the same. So the challenge for the brand is to actually stand out and make their brand identity stand out and uh, create a relationship with the customers. And this is doable um, with editorial and lifestyle images. Um, so that's probably why we're seeing an increase of usage in the websites from brands of editorial imagery. And um, so to see this evolution and this change in the website, we have prepared some examples for today. And our first one, let me share my screen, is actually from Urban Outfitters and is a lookbook from 2020. I'm gonna scroll down uh, a little bit slowly on uh, the page so you can all see um, the different images uh, from this lookbook. And Ron, I'm gonna ask you, what is uh, that stands out to you? What can we say about this, um, about these images? I, I actually love this shoot and I'm sorry, uh, David, I think you mentioned that you're in, in a COVID bed. So I assume you have COVID and this is such a shout out because it's like 2020. And like, I think everyone oh. that worked in a studio production at the time, um, they understood the struggle of like trying to manage and produce a shoot like during, <laughs> during the middle of COVID without like all of the restrictions and all the struggles of like booking places. And this shoot was just that, right? Like, it, like it was shot in a supermarket and, and the target audience is clearly sort of like the young adults with like sort of like the festival colorful looks. And I just love that they, they just kind of, you know, they, they did something to connect with the audience at the time and they're shooting in like this eerie, empty, super like small grocery shop. And uh, I think it's really cool just what they've done with it, right? Right. And I think it's the perfect example of what we were saying before of storytelling or just making uh, the customer see the brand identity. And this is perfect because it's very like strictly connected to the brand of Urban, like a playful um, for young adults. So we see that um, it really depends, like the images really depends on what's the brand's uh, audience needs and goals. And we really see this um, in this first example. So let's see, here are a couple, a few more images. So to move on actually to our second one, it's um, a Spanish clothing brand and um, is um, the, their main product is dresses for wedding guests. They also have accessories, but their main products um, is dresses. And um, here we see that actually in each one of those um, images for the uh, products, they're all editorial. And from a consumer point of view, um, so from me seeing this and shopping for a wedding dress, um, what stands out that still every picture attracts me because I really want to know what's the story behind each set since they're also all very different. So. Ron, I'm gonna scroll down also, and for this one, the uh, the page, uh, which is just the general collection for the dresses. So what what do you think we can highlight this, considering what type of brand it is? Yeah, I mean, I, I actually really love this example because it shows like a lot of editorial imagery, but it, it if you look at each imagery and you keep scrolling down, like every location is different, mm -hmm. right? So that, that just kind of creates a different illusion for when you're shopping. Like for me personally, like I'm, I'm not even thinking about the dresses anymore. I'm think like, I would imagine that if, if I'm shopping for a dress, like I'm actually thinking about the locations and like, oh, wow, like when is my next travel destination? Like, what am I going to wear to that travel destination? So I think that from right. like a perspective, like they've already got you hooked before you've even actually started looking at the dresses, right? So it's, it's just right. sort of like a visual experience, like scrolling down through this page and it's great to see. Um, like yeah, and also, if you keep scrolling down, like, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Let me see. It was more down here that we discussed. Here we go. 
yeah and then after that visual experience it just suddenly hits you with with their actual sort of like product page but we haven't even reached the product page we're still sort of in, in the elevated section right so it, it right. it's just visually it's a great experience to shop on this website i think yeah it's it's very interesting i i actually found out this um website because i was looking for um a wedding dress for a wedding that i have and i got really i spent so much time uh in this page <laughs> you don't even know so um it really like i think the brand strategy behind this it's really working and if we look at one of the products perhaps this one you can see that even all the product um, images are editorial, all of them. There's no um, a standard e-com shot. And also we can see that at the end, we, we also have a video. So I don't know if you've seen um, Ron, uh, that it's very common to also integrate um, a video or is something that is picking up right now, or what do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, video is definitely picking up. Um, it, a lot of studios are struggling with just how new it is. And, you know, they're not prepared to to think about all mm -hmm. the logistics of, you know, what camera to use, what settings to use, how much storage is this going to take, how much time is it going to take to edit, right? So all of these things are right. just, you know, pain points that uh, we are definitely able to help with, right? And it, it is right. very new, but there's a lot of research around it and, and how how it's being used and then how many products, because you can't put it on all the products either, right? So it, it's definitely right. an interesting trend. So let me share our last example that is a beauty brand. And here at first, oh, I just spoilered what happened. So we, we think is a standard uh, e-com shop for products. Um, but actually, when we go on top of each uh, product images, we see that each one of them has a different editorial um, shot. So uh, what do you think of this brand's approach or um, what can we highlight here, Ron? Yeah, I was, I was actually looking through some of the images and I can see you like scrolling through. And I really like how close and personal they are to like the subjects. and you know, they're trying to create a variety within the categories by just getting closer and more personal with, with the models, right? Um, I think the beauty market is expected to grow in the coming years, which of course means that there's a lot of growth in beauty retouching as well, right? And I have to admit, I'm, I'm not supposed to be biased, but uh, beauty retouching is probably my favorite thing to do. I think it's it's like how I started my career as a retoucher. And it really teaches you like all of the fundamentals of retouching, right? Because you have to really do something tastefully elevated, but still retain some of that natural look and feel of the models. And uh, well, I think this website, the, yeah. my only advice would be, I really, I really wish that they would mix a little bit instead of having to scroll through to, to really see yes. like the, the models. I think they should mix it in a little bit more. And that might create a little bit like more of a visual experience. Right. Um, and also I bet for this uh, type of products is very hard um, just to, to make, to show the, the natural perception in terms of um, just what type of models or also what type of product, if it's face, like in this case, this collection is for face product uh, specifically, but it could be hair. So there's all like different challenges to um, actually uh, recreate that and make it um, see uh, in, a, in an image. So that's um, that must be uh, a good challenge for, for brands. So I'm gonna stop sharing because we have seen um, how, so brands are kind of in the middle of, or have been in the past years also, um, have been uh, in this evolution of or changes for um, e-commerce um, websites, um, I mean, uh, PDPs or category pages. And, and we can say that the team behind all of this and behind uh, the managing of the content creation of the editorial content creation, and also the post-production process for it um, must uh, face new challenges and new complexities. 
So um, if you would have to say, uh, what are the main challenges that the team um, behind this can encounter, Ron? What, what do you think, in your opinion, and based on your experience also? Yeah, I think for me personally, like based on my previous experience, like scalability and consistent high quality are the two biggest pain points. Um, I would say that most studios will run into these days because they have a lot of like budget requirements and tight deadlines, right? So that's something that we have to navigate about. And when I was managing a post-production team, we didn't really have a dedicated team to like do editorial or a dedicated team for elevated and e-commerce. We really just had one team that had to constantly switch between the three of them back and forth. So you never really mm -hmm. had time to to be creative with these things or spend as much time as right. you wanted to, right? Because you had to finish the editorial and then hop back into e-commerce and then go to elevate it. And then by the time you're finished with those two, the next editorial shoots coming right around the corner. So that was probably the hardest thing to balance was just not having a dedicated team just to pay attention. So you would spend a lot of money in an editorial shoot, but then spend very little time in post-production, right? So. Um, right. Well, yeah. And we can and we can say, as we said before, that since for editorial images, at least, it's really important and it's crucial, the storytelling. Um, if you have high workloads or just tight deadlines, uh, and these are for sure not going to change in the future <laughs> or it's just going to get worse, <laughs> um, you really don't have time to focus um, on the creativity part that for editorial images, it's um, it's very important. So that's why in this last part of our conversation for today, we want to show how can the Pixels tool help to solve quite a few of these challenges by streamlining the editorial process of the editorial content creation. So um, we are going to share some images that Ron created um, of the before and after um, before the post-production and after the post-production while looking at our platform in a second. But I also wanted to mention that um, we started working with editorial um, in our platform from 2021. And as the years have passed, we evolved and we are keeping up with the industry changes um, as we have seen now. And also we did launch a different um, new updates of the features of the platform to kind of make it for everyone, for both the clients and us, smoother and faster. Um, so it has been a, a journey also for us. So let me share my screen to see actually the, um, the Pixels platform. And you're going to see um, the platform and you have two different um, orders. So the first one on top is an order that is still in production. And the one at the bottom is an order that it's ready to download. So it has been approved. And Ron, I'm going to ask you because um, you are leading the editorial team. And I know there is a team uh, of retouchers dedicated to, um, to editorial projects and images. So uh, what do you think is the best quality um, of your team and also how can they um, help solve those problems, well, those challenges that we just mentioned earlier? That's a difficult question to answer, but um, I mean, the the core statistics is my, my team currently can retouch 80 to 120 editorial images per day, which in an editorial world, like that, that's quite a lot, right? If you think about it, like that would be very costly for the average like post-production studio to produce on the really tight deadlines mm -hmm. and like every day. So we we take a lot of that pressure away from in-house teams, which leaves a lot more resources for, you know, the creative process in-house. Um, and, you know, my, my team is very adaptable. Like the, the main, mm -hmm. the, they've been retouchers for five plus 10 years, right? So it's very varied team, different ages and, our main goal is just to understand what the requirements are, right? And take that, right. take the pain points away from the in-house teams. 
Right. So let's have a look at uh, the platform and you're going to talk through some features, but also when we arrive at showing the images, you are going to talk um, about how you did um, those changes and um, what happened to the before, what happened to the after image. So um, let's look here. So this is the platform. And as I said, we're going to look at the uh, approved one. So the one that is ready to download, which is the second one at the bottom. And sorry, in a second, we're going to see. So now, and I'm going to pass the words to you, Ron, that you probably know um, best yeah. what to say about this platform. I think that if you've worked with Pixels before, like you're quite familiar with their platform, right? And the cool thing about the platform is that it integrates all the products into the platform. So you don't have to have different accounts or anything like that. You can manage all of your assets just from the same account. So here we're just going through through some of the tools in case that you've never seen it. Um, and of course, you know, th there's a plethora of information on how to use the, the platform to manage the mm -hmm. assets. Uh, this this order in particular that we're we're going through right now, it's it's already finished. And it unfortunately has only three images, but uh, Here's the main functionalities you can go through with like shortcuts or using your mouse. So whatever you're more comfortable with, because I, you know, that's part of the workflow. And the main tool is being able to see the before and afters in overlaid mode. And I believe it's going to go through another mode. Now, yeah. In a second. Yep. So you can see before and after in overlay, and that really allows you to see all the work that's been done and where you need to focus. So this is a really cool feature because you can see side by side, but you can also see overlay mode. So I really love doing QC using this feature because you're able to just kind of have both side by side and overlay mode into one screen. So this, this image is, is second built, one. I, mm -hmm. Yep. I believe the main requirements were to kind of keep the structural integrity, but like fix it up quite a lot. And this is a film shot, so we were recreating like all the film edges and giving it that film look and maintaining all of that texture. Mm -hmm. I love the dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, here we're showcasing yeah, now the we side by side it. feature as well. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. It's the same what we've seen before um, in the first one, but with the second image. And this is our third one. Yeah, so coming up on the third image, the, the main feature was to, of course, like this is actually a digital version of the film image that we saw before. And this is what we would call like sort of like a consistency just to make sure that the two images match side by side. And unfortunately in this shot, we had to remove the duck. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, was, that was the requirement. Um, yeah, I right. do wish I could put so... more pictures though, but... Yeah, but we've seen quite a few. And also we can um, recap, actually, if we go back here at the bottom right is where you can also write um, any comments um, or rejections. And also you will have all in one place, um, even the, the pre-production comments where you can also upload attachments and uh, the rejections, like everything is going to be in one place. And also everyone is able to see the progress, the status of each image. And um, as Ron just explained, you can see the overlaid for the back, the before and after. You can see it uh, side by side. You, you're able to see even all the other images um, to kind of um, look at um, if they are consistent, if you have a batch of image from the same shooting. Um, so. This is mostly uh, like the major uh, points uh, for the feature of our platform. And of course, you can reach out to, to me, to Ron, um, and to us um, if you uh, want to know uh, further information and more details. Uh, but also, since we have um, some more time, you can drop your question in the section of the Q&A the, in the chat on the right, and we can... Um, we can go over them and we can answer some of them today. So go ahead if you have any question. 
but while we um, we wait that people drop in their questions, um, I have a question for you, Ron, because it's something that people always um, ask us, or at least very often. So how do the revisions um, rounds um, for the images work, and how do we ensure the quality control for images? Yeah, I mean, Obviously, like the the editorial team is sort of like the dedicated team for for understanding the editorial product and the work that we do. But I mean, if mm -hmm. if you're not familiar with the platform, uh, that really offers you a tool to communicate with us directly, or you know, directly with the editors, right? Because the, whatever mistakes that we are failing to understand, that is really a direct line of communication with the, with the editors and the process, right? So. It, it's a really valuable tool for the clients to be able to have all that access. Um, in terms mm -hmm. of quality control, we have a dedicated QA team that, you know, handles a lot of that. And whenever we fail to understand something, it, it's our due diligence to make sure that we understand it and then make sure that, you know, the editors are understanding what the requirements are. Um, but I personally like mm -hmm. using the platform because you can communicate with the editors directly just via the rejections and the pre-production comments. So it, it's almost like an instruction manual. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, you, and I guess like even it's nice because everyone um, can have a full overview like from both sides of everything that is happening. Um, so that must be like very, very useful for both teams. And um, of course, it seems like we don't have many questions, but also um, if you, um, if you have some question afterwards, uh, we are gonna we're gonna share an overview of our Pixel um, post production editorial post production solution right after together with the recording of this session. So if you go over the session and you have some question, you can always reach out to us. Um, and so thank you everyone. We actually have an upcoming webinar already um, that is happening on September twenty fifth, and it's with Carlos our CPO and Pamela, our content marketing manager. So, and it's on elevated workflow, what's new from Pixels. So if you wanted to learn more, and have more information on um, more features and more uh, product updates, and also on what's coming up next uh, at Pixels, join us on September 25th. And thank you so much, Ron, uh, for joining us. I think we can leave you to have a, a good night. <laughs> I don't know if every, anyone no is joining from this late. <laughs> Probably most of the people are actually starting their uh, day in the maybe North America. Um, so thank you everyone for joining today. And I really hope we can see everyone at the next one. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ron. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.